meeting of the Environment and Natural Resources Finance and Policy Committee to order. A quorum is present. Um, Representative Purcell, have you had a chance to look at the minutes from March 28th? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, and I move their approval. Representative Purcell moves the minutes for March 28th, 2023. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The motion prevails and the minutes are approved. Um, we are going to start with House File 2310 um, and go until 530. Uh, Representative Hansen, would you like to move your bill? Yes, I will, uh, Madam Chair, I will move that House File 2310 be recommended to be re-referred to the Ways and Means Committee and I will move the DE1 amendment. Representative Hansen has moved the DE1 amendment to get it before the committee. Um, and Representative Hansen, I believe you have the A8 Authors Amendment. Would you like to move that amendment? Yes, Madam Chair, I would move the A8 Authors Amendment. Representative Hansen to the A8 Amendment. Um, members, and to, if you will look in your packet, uh, this amendment includes uh, some polishing on items that were in the bill and also input from uh, the agency. So I'm just going to do a quick summary. Lines 1.3 to 1.18. 2.4 to 2.9, 2.12 to 3.5. These are moving Minnesota Pollution Control Agency rep riders to different divisions. This was a PCA request. Lines 1.19 to 2.2, we're rewording the PCA rider for innova innovative technology research to clarify that the 900,000 uh, carve out for NRI is not the maximum amount available for NRI. This is a PCA request. Line 2.3, a technical fix to change the Commissioner of Agriculture to the Commissioner of PCA and the Biofuel Life Cycle Assessment uh, to reflect the amendment adopted in committee. Lines 2.10 to 2.11, clarifying the base for a transfer to the Commissioner of Health. This is a PCA request. Lines 3.6, extends the availability of the appropriation for DNR's peatland work to June 30th, 2028, a DNR request. Lines 3.7 to 3.21 and 3.27 to 2.8, moving DNR riders to different divisions. Again, a DNR request. Lines 3.25 to 3.26, extends the availability of the school tree planting grants to June 30th, 2026, a DNR request. Uh, lines 3.29, reduces the cancellation amount for previous CWD work. Lines 3.30 to 4.8, makes technical changes to the critical habitat private sector account appropriation, a DNR request, as well as uh, provides additional ongoing appropriation of 2.25 uh, million in the tails. Should note to members that this does, this is accountable for, or does bring in Pittman-Robertson dollars as well. Um, I see Mr. Hagemeyer nodding, if he could just say that's correct. Mr. Hagemeyer. Uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Kerry, yes, the expenditures for WMA acquisition uh, count for, towards Pittman Robertson reimbursement of 75%. And Mr. Hagemeyer, can you tell the committee what that means? <laughs> that would be the federal money, the excise tax, the state gets an apportionment, but it's 75% reimbursement on, it's a federal tax, 75% <laughs> reimbursement on certain expenditures. This is one that qualifies so they can get 75% federal reimbursement on the money. Thank you. Chair Hansen. Lines 4.9 to 4.10 extends the availability of the whitetail deer farm appropriation and sets a base of 3.250 million. Lines 4.11 to 4.12 makes technical changes and increases the cancellation amount for previous CWD work. Lines 4.13, a technical correction to the Office of School Trust Lands Appropriation. Lines 4.14 to 4.20, uh, allows DNR to reallocate money between the appropriations uh, under the Get Out More subdivision and extends the availability to June 30th, 2029. This was a DNR request. The language was mistakenly removed in drafting. Lines 4.21 to 4.23 provide direct appropriation to the de Department of Military Affairs instead of a grant through DNR for an ENRTF project. This was an LCCMR staff request. Lines 4.24 to 10.22 replaces language from the cumulative impacts with uh, House File 637 with new language that is narrowed towards air permits as well as numerous other changes. Lines 10.23 to 10.25 makes changes to the watercraft safety operator to provide an exemption for short boater safety equipment requirements applicable to motorboat rental business and lowers the frequency of the requirement. 
Lines 10.26 modifies the EAB response grants to state that, that a nonprofit serving serving a district heating system would be eligible for up to $20 per ton rather than $20 a ton. Um, lines 10.27 makes the Swan Protection Area designations mandatory rather than permissive. 10.28 uh, to 12.28 Alliance Farm Survey Day article with the most recent version of House File 1202 and provides exemptions from the Survey Day import restrictions for zoos. Uh, lines 12.29 to 12.30 are technical to allow section renumbering and adjusting totals. Uh, I would ask for your support to get the bill in the shape I would like. Representative Hansen has moved the A8 amendment. Is there a discussion to the A8 amendment? Uh, seeing none, um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no, and the motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. The next amendment I have is the A1, and Representative Liz Lagarde, I believe you have the A1 amendment. Would you like to move this amendment and explain it? So moved, uh, Madam Chair. What's it all about? Okay, so uh, this amendment will allow St. Louis County to use up to 50% of the principal in their environmental trust fund for the economic development and environmental projects within the county that protect the environment or create clean economy jobs and manufacturing. This amendment has no fiscal impact to the state of Minnesota. This change is important so that St. Louis County can continue doing the work to remove PFAS from the wastewater and landfills throughout the uh, county. This work will protect Lake Superior from further PFAS contamination. This, um, this, uh, this was created, this fund was created um, several years ago, um, allowing a county to sell some select one-time lakeshore lease uh, and invest that money um, from the sale into the environmental uh, fund. This change would allow them to continue to do that uh, related to PFAST. Um, there is currently $29 million in the fund. The uh, county can currently use 5% of the principal and interest. The county has been extremely uh, frugal in its use of this fund and has allowed it to grow. Now that the county needs to use more of the fund to match state dollars with federal dollars, American Rescue Plan Act dollars, and more uh, for environmental projects related to PFAS and cleaning up pollution uh, and dumps. So as you guys all know, PFAS has been a uh, major um, issue that this committee has identified and uh, St. Louis County um, is trying to be uh, a, a problem solver and uh, I'm very, very proud of that. We're still looking for uh, more state dollars, but this is their dollars and they are asking to use 50% uh, instead of 5% of their own money. It's no cost to anyone except us and I think this is a wonderful amendment and I would ask for your support. Representative Liz Lagarde has moved the A1 amendment. Is there further discussion? Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. All that sounded really good. Thanks. Representative. Um, the part that I'm just trying to get a little bit more clarity on is for economic development. I get the environmental projects that you mentioned. Help me out. So, Representative Lissagard. Sorry, Madam Chair. I'm not used to having a dialogue back and forth. Um, <laughs> um, so there's other economic things. Uh, Helene, right? So we know that that, um, that um, solar manufacturer plant in, in um, Mount Nyer is, those are, those are some of the things that potentially that they could use this for um, to spur development. That's just one example. Representative Heinzman. Okay, uh, Representative Hansen, do you have a position on the A1 amendment? I support the amendment. Um, great, all those in favor of the A1 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no, the motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. The next amendment is the A2 amendment, which I will move. Uh, this amendment requires the use of non-toxic shot when hunting small game on a WMA or a wildlife management area in the farmland zone beginning on July 1st of 2024. Um, the purpose of WMAs or wildlife management areas, according to the DNR, is to protect wildlife habitat for future generations, provide citizens with opportunities for hunting, fishing, wildlife watching, and promote important wildlife-based Tourism in this state and lead ammo is incompatible with all three of these aims. We've heard testimony 
This year on the effects of lead on wildlife and birds in particular, mm -hmm. uh, we've also heard testimony on the effects that lead has on humans. Um, and this amendment language has passed the House the past four years and has received extensive testimony. It's also based on a previous rule that the DNR had. And I hope that members mm -hmm. will support this amendment. Um, discussion to the A2. Representative Fisher. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, thank you uh, for bringing this amendment. I just had a quick clarification is how many actual acres would this approximately apply to on the wildlife side? Uh, thank you, Representative Fisher. I don't have the amendment, I don't have the acreage off the top of my head, but the farmland zone is a portion of the state that is south and west of a line that follows Highway 70 westward from Wisconsin to Highway 65 to Highway 23, to US 169 at Malacca, to Highway 18 at Garrison, to Highway 210 at Brainerd, to Highway 10 at Motley, to US Highway 59 at DL, and then northward to the Canadian border. And it also is only in effect on WMAs, or wildlife <coughs> management areas. Representative um, Finke. No, 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 oh, no, 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 we've, got, we've got an expert there. <laughs> Why well, well, everyone's pointing at Representative Finke. Um, <laughs> Mr. Rivers, welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and try to help us out here. Madam Chair, members, for the record, my name is Pat Rivers, Deputy Director for the Division of Fish and Wildlife with the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. I think the question was how many acres are in the farmland zone? That is correct, sir. And uh, we, the entire state has 1.3 million acres of uh, wildlife management areas and about 400,000 in the farmland zone. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Out of, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Representative Fisher. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. And, and thank you for your description of the amendment, although I need to mention today that there isn't peace in the valley on this. This is something that is controversial amongst uh, some of the folks affected. And I would be asking for a roll call today on this. A roll call has been requested. Further discussion to the amendment. Representative Hansen, do you have a position on the amendment? I support the amendment and I'd like Mr. Rivers to state the DNR's position on the amendment. Mr. Rivers. Madam Chair, members, uh, as you know, this is something the DNR proposed several years back. And when we did that, we had a implementation date that would allow hunters and manufacturers to adjust their ammunition supplies to uh, the new regulations. So we'd like to work with the author and, and the, the committee on, on an implementation date that would allow that to happen. I think that can be accomplished. Um, you have my word to work on that, and it looks like Representative Hansen is shaking his yes. head yes, that he would also work with you on that. A roll call has been requested, and the clerk will take the roll. Representative Hansen. Yes. Representative Hansen, aye. Representative Jordan. Aye. Representative Jordan, aye. Representative Heinzman. No. Representative Heinzman, no. Representative Brand. Aye. Representative Brand, aye. Representative Burkle. Burkle, no. Representative Burkle, no. Representative Edelson. Representative Edelson, aye. Representative Finke. Aye. Representative Finke, aye. Representative Fisher. Aye. Representative Fisher, aye. Representative Gilman. Gilman, no. Representative Gilman, no. Representative Jacob. Jacob, no. Representative Jacob, no. Representative Lee. Lee, aye. Representative Lee, aye. Representative Lissagard. Lissagard, no. Representative Lissagard, no. Representative Purcell. Aye. Representative Purcell, aye. Representative Schultz. Schultz, no. Representative Schultz, no. Representative Scraba. No. Representative Scraba, no. Madam Chair, the ayes are eight and the noes are seven. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. I th uh, and Madam Chair, I think you forgot Representative Vang. Oh, oh dear, Representative Vang, how do you vote on the amendment? Oh, I'm <laughs> aye. Re Vang votes aye. Representative Vang, aye. Mr. O'Neill, what is the um, current vote total? Madam Chair, the current vote is nine ayes and seven nays. The ayes have it, and the A2 amendment is adopted. Thank you, Representative Vang, I apologize. The next amendment I have is the A6, and I believe, Representative Lee, this is your amendment. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, would you like to move the amendment and explain it? Madam Chair, I move the A6 amendment. Uh, members, the A6 amendment is deleting section 12, which is the zero waste program. I'm making this amendment on behalf of uh, Representative Hollins, and so the amendment streamlines the language related to the grant process, aligns the definition of the EJ area, the environmental justice area, with what's in the cumulative impact uh, portion of the bill, add definitions for electronics and refurbish, clarifies that the grant funds can be used to support market development for reuse and clean it up, the definition of reuse, and also removes some of the definitions that, that are already defined in statute. 
Thank you, Representative Lee. Is there discussion to the A6 amendment? Representative Hansen, do you have a position on the A6 amendment? I support the amendment. Um, with that, all those in favor of the A6 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. And the motion prevails, and the A6 amendment is adopted. And Representative Lee, I believe the A7 is your amendment as well. Would you like to move this amendment and explain it? Yes, so Madam Chair, uh, the A7 amendment creates a new green infrastructure grant program at the NPCA. Uh, this was included in a bill that I have moved and will be having a discussion in capital investment. And so subdivision one established the program. Uh, subdivision two defines uh, green infrastructure, political subdivision, the type of projects, stormwater infrastructure, and then uh, subdivision three talks about political subdivision being able to apply and receive a grant under the section. Subdivision four is an application to be uh, prescribed by the commissioner of the PCA. Uh, five is the grant for the eligible project to be used to acquire land or interest in land, pre-design, design, renovate, construct, furnish, and equip a project. And then grants will be uh, awarded to a political subdivision and they should give priority to a uh, political subdivision that provides a local match for the project. Thank you, Representative Wee. Is there further discussion to the A6 amendment? Um, Representative Hansen, do you have a... Yes, sorry, the A7 amendment. We just did the A6 amendment. Um, Representative Hansen, do you have a position on the A7 amendment? I support the A7 amendment. Um, all those in favor of the A7 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no, and the motion, the motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. Um, the next amendment I have is the A10 amendment, which I believe is another author's amendment as well. Representative Hansen, would you like to move the A-10 amendment and explain it? I would move the A-10 amendment, uh, Madam Chair. And the A-10 amendment uh, relates to LCCMR reform. Uh, those members who were here last year may remember that I had introduced a bill for LCCMR reform, uh, heard a number of comments relating to that, introduced the bill again, uh, and we will be hearing that uh, in the evening session tonight. Uh, but this amendment uh, makes some changes to that bill uh, as an amendment to this bill. Um, I've stated before on the floor and I think uh, in numerous public entities that if we are going to go to the ballot uh, for renewing the Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund, we need to have some reform with the LCCMR to make it work better. So what I uh, just want to walk through uh, the changes that are proposed here, uh, it would have 10 legislative members and nine citizen members. The legislative members of the commission would be three members of the House of Representatives appointed by the Speaker of the House, including the chair of this committee or the chair's designee. Three members of the Senate appointed by the Senate Majority Leader, including the chair of the Environment and Natural Resources Finance Committee or the chair's designee. Two members of the House of Representatives appointed by the House Minority Leader. So this is a change in the past you've had uh, the minority members appointed by the speaker or the leader in the Senate. So this would have the minority member uh, appointees being done by the minority, not by the majority. Two members of the Senate appointed by the Senate majority, minority leader. In addition, the citizen members, there would be four members, so fewer than currently appointed by the governor. Uh, there would be two members appointed by the Senate majority leader, two members appointed by the speaker, one member appointed by the governor as recommended by the tribal uh, government representatives of the Indian Affairs Council. Uh, a member must not be a registered lobbyist. Uh, the chair would rotate among members as is current. Legislative members would be entitled to reimbursement for per diem under their current uh, process. Citizen members may be compensated up to $125 today. That's the uh, Chair Jordan's bill. So again, the legislative members would be under the legislative plan, uh, both in the House and the Senate, and the citizens would be compensated up to $125 a day. A citizen member may serve no more than eight years, except as necessary to fill a vacancy. If they were filling a vacancy, a citizen member could serve up to 10 years. Uh, the Citizen Selection Committee that exists currently to make recommendations to the governor uh, 
that would uh, last longer than one year. There's been a challenge in the past few years where uh, the executive has had to reappoint <coughs> members of the citizen committee in order to make the recommendations. So there's been a, a lag. And it also clarifies that they would uh, receive per diem and they must not be a registered lobbyist. Uh, the uh, commission will have, uh, must adopt a strategic plan. And uh, although we have increased the numbers of the members of the LCCMR, we have decreased the number uh, required for formal recommendations from 12 to 11. This should ensure that there is a work product that is more than a majority, but not an unobtainable supermajority. Uh, describes a little bit on the work plan. Um, it has a conflict of interest provision, uh, clarifying that they may not vote on the final recommendation if they have a direct personal financial interest. Uh, and so this, this effect section is effective January 1, 2026. Um, in addition, it describes the initial citizen appointment. So the current members would serve. Uh, hopefully the ENRTF will be uh, reauthorized and then the new appointment process would work, uh, providing for staggered terms. And I ask for your support. Representative Hansen has moved the A-10 amendment. Is there a discussion? Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Representative Hansen, we've both served on the LCCMR. Uh, I've served, I think, three terms, I'm going back on for another term. And while there's been lots of conversation about what might be done to maybe create a more cohesive group or uh, what might create a better outcome relative to this or that expectation that you may have or I may have or others, I'm, a, I'm struggling a little bit with this and I do have some questions. And one of the first questions I have is, okay, if we're uh, hearing a bill later, you know, for the benefit of those at home and for those in the room, um, what's sort of the strategy here? Is this different than the bill we're hearing tonight or is this the same? Representative Hansen. Madam Chair and Representative Heinzman, it is similar uh, because there has been a challenge in getting pieces drafted. Uh, and so the deadline for the bills tonight was before the deadline for the bills we're hearing now. That's nobody's fault, it's just what happened. And so uh, we are hearing this. I will confess it is unusual, um, but we felt that uh, this could get all of the detail in it than is, than is in the bill we're here tonight. Mm -hmm. And that we can probably facilitate the discussion that the same questions that uh, members of the majority and the minority may have could be taken care of during this time. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. So, Representative Hansen, um, earlier this year we heard some legislation being proposed that got after what some had felt were problems in the LCCMR grant process. And there was an entire commission created, meetings were held, public meetings, I'm assuming. Where did this language come from? Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Chair. This language uh, was introduced last year by me, and it was introduced again this year by me, and the amendment was drafted by me. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. And the, uh, the authorship isn't lost on me. I'm aware of the process that this particular language has followed. And I think it's important for the, for the conversation today and tonight. We all have our ideas as to how a particular uh, proposal may or may not impact to create maybe a desired outcome. So I, I, am, I do have a lot of questions about this. I'll probably save most of that for tonight, but I did want to get a better idea what this was compared to uh, what we're proposing tonight, and I haven't had time to go through and read every line to compare the differences. Is there anything here that we should be talking about that won't have, we won't have an opportunity to talk about tonight? Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Chair, and Representative Heinzman, no, uh, on, the, on this bill. There, the separate bill on the 
trust fund is not in here. So there will be the trust fund question. But that is a separate uh, Representative Holland's bill. Uh, but then there is this bill. Um, I would just point out uh, the this does have the term limits in there that I know was of concern uh, for you. You know, listening to the debate uh, over the years, uh, trying to accommodate. And this bill, or the amendments that I've got here, are different than the bill as was introduced. And the changes that are made are based on, you know, both public and private comments I've received from members on both sides of the aisle. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. Final question, and I think that the rest of my, my questions I can wait for tonight. But one last thing, you mentioned term limits, which is a uh, provision I think that has bipartisan support. I certainly support it. Uh, can you just quickly confirm one way or another, does that have retroactive effect? And there's other provisions relative to uh, the current board. Um, if there's any differences there that may not have that potential impact, whether it be retroactive or not, could you maybe mention it? Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the effective date on these provisions is January 1, 26. So it's not retroactive. I don't have a retroactive prov provision in there. Uh, the goal would be that they would serve, the current members would serve out their terms uh, or most of their terms. And then you'd have the reappointment process or new appointment process. Representative Heinzman. I'm sorry, Chair. All right, Representative Hansen, just to be clear then. So if someone has served, let's say, a very long time. The clock wouldn't start ticking, if I understand you correctly, until this language becomes law. Madam. Representative Hansen. Madam Chair, that is correct. So the clock could start, would start on the new. So the current service uh, would not be considered. But I'd be willing to work with you on that. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. I, I appreciate that, Representative Hansen, because I, I think that's I would argue that's necessary to get the desired outcome here. We need, I think, to address a few uh, concerns there, and I appreciate your willingness to, to reach out to me. I hope that you do. I think, I think that that would help further the bipartisan effort on some of the provisions, and we'll discuss some of the other concerns when the bill comes back later tonight. Representative Hansen. And Madam Chair and Representative Heinzman, there's also the provision in there because people do leave you know, so I wanted to make sure that if somebody did leave midterm and they got appointed to a four-year term, you know, they filled out a term and then they've got other, we want to make sure that they're not starting and stopping uh, in that. So I tried to accommodate, I, I think, similar to what you're talking about if there were vacancies. Further questions from members? Um, and I don't need to ask Representative Hansen what he thinks about his amendment. Um, so all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no. 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 And the motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. The last amendment I have is the A3, and I believe that is a Representative Schultz amendment. Would you like to move your amendment and then explain it for the committee? I would, Madam Chair. I'd move the A3 amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair and, and Representative Hansen. Uh, I know that we've had a couple brief conversations about this, but the A3 amendment is uh, in regards to an issue that uh, is in my district as it relates to an ongoing uh, conflict uh, on water use. And the DNR is working very actively um, in, in my community with all of the stakeholders involved. And this particular amendment uh, provides uh, for uh, the funding uh, for uh, an analysis of alternative uh, sources of water to be used in this ongoing uh, conversation. And so um, I would uh, just encourage uh, support of this amendment and, um, and, 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 yeah, encourage your support of the A3. Thanks so much. Representative Schultz has moved the A3 amendment. Is there discussion from members to the A3 amendment? Um, Representative Finke. Uh, thank you, Chair. Did we hear this bill? I, I heard that there was some conversations, but I don't remember it. Uh, we have not heard this bill in this committee. Uh, Representative Schultz has been heard in another committee. 
No, uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Representative Finke. Uh, this bill has not been heard. It was introduced um, and has been um, in, in conversation over the last month. Um, while we did run out of time um, to have this bill heard, I don't hold that against any member of this committee that we didn't have the chance to hear it heard, but um, I have had conversations with uh, not only stakeholders back in my district, but also with the DNR um, about this particular language, and um, I believe they may be available to comment as to whether uh, this provision um, has has earned their support. I suspect they might be able to. Um, welcome to the committee. Would you um, introduce yourself and then um, help us out here with your position on the A3 amendment? Madam Chair and members, Jason Meckel, Department of Natural Resources, Section Manager for Ecological and Water Resources. Uh, as Representative Schultz has indicated, we've been working very closely in Little Rock Creek area and um, we, we um, do support the, uh, what the bill is trying to do. We think it's de it is needed. It definitely would help us um, advance the issues. It has the right elements. Uh, you know, our just main concern is that it's identifying the funds coming from our general operating budget. You know, so we're happy to work with the author and the committee and as it goes forward. Thank you. Representative Finke, follow up. No, thank you, Chair. Representative Fisher. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and I appreciate hearing from the department. Uh, and I, I support uh, what you're proposing here. It feels very similar to what we've been trying to do addressing the water issues in the East Metro. It seems to be trying to follow that same model as providing the resources, folks, to f try to figure out how do we solve the issues out there. And I appreciate the work that's happening in that area. Representative Brand. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, page 26, line 25, delete 6 million and insert 5. A million seven hundred thousand. So I'm just wondering, where does that three hundred thousand dollars disappear? Representative From. Schultz. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is a particular portion of the bill that actually goes into doing this sort of work um, in 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 the state budget. So. Um, and, and the work that the DNR does, and maybe the DNR could provide even greater detail to this specific piece of it, and and that's why we just int you know specifically mentioned the three hundred thousand on page twenty eight. Uh, that then makes that whole number to okay. six million. So we're we're not taking out any money. We're just basically specifying in this amendment that this that money would be dedicated towards this particular analysis. Thank you, Mr. Meckel. Madam Chair and members, uh, that's a portion of the bill. It's a six million dollar general fund annual amount that goes towards groundwater management in particular. It was something that came out of the 2013 legislature. It funds some very specific items around groundwater activities, uh, permits, permit reviews, data analysis, modeling, um, support to SWCDs. Um, it's a, been a critical aspect of our being able to do a, a good job with groundwater resources. Uh, Representative Heinzman? No. Uh, Representative Hansen, do you have a position on the A3 amendment? Madam Chair, I would support the amendment. I would work with the uh, author of the amendment and the DNR to make sure we're uh, getting it from the proper funding. I'm seeing head nods from Representative Schultz and the DNR as well. Um, great. All those in favor of the A3 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Members, that is the last amendment that I have. Um, we will now go to questions on the DE1 amendment as adopted. Discussion from members. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. And I, I do have some questions that DNR may want to weigh in on. Just couple of basic things. Uh, I'll just go ahead and start with the question and see if DNR can make their way down. I just, maybe, it, maybe it's not something that they can address, but I'll just start. So Representative Hanson, I'll lead off with FTEs and wondering uh, how many we're talking about in the bill. Representative Hanson, or should I just go directly to Commissioner Meyer? Well, um, Madam Chair and Representative Heinzman, we have made a number of changes in the DE1 to the fiscal notes. Uh, I'll just use one example. The original bill had the Swan protection areas statewide, and we took that down to the metro areas, so there will be a consequence and cost reduction there. So some of the, those estimates are going to be, and there's a number of things. Representative Lee's amendments on uh, cumulative impacts are going to have reductions in the cost, so, um, but... I don't know where he went. Uh, so there will be, um, I think the agency could give some estimate, but 
realize that with the amendments we've adopted, there's going to be changes, and we should have a full fiscal note for um, ways and means. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. And just to clarify, new FDEs is what I'm looking for. If we have a ballpark idea. Commissioner Myers. Mr. Chairman, members, Representative Heinz and Bob Myers, Sister Commission, Department of Natural Resources. I can't give you an exact count on this bill, but on the governor's recommendation, the new FTEs were 74 and they weren't, they're not all new FTEs. Some, when you go dealing with one-time funds, sometimes we recount FTEs every year. So I can give you a, a more precise number in a day or two on the exact new FTEs. Most of the funding is for supporting existing staff. But I will work on that and get, get the committee an answer. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. That's, that's helpful. I think that that is a, is a question that has been on some folks' mind. It'd be good to know um, if the agency's growing, how big. Um, I did have um, a couple of other questions not a, not a lot, Representative Hanson. There's a lot that we've already discussed, obviously. So just wanted to touch on a few things today. So just a ballpark idea again, since we can't get exact specifics relative to the points that you made a moment ago, Representative Hanson's, but Mr. President Hanson, but do you have a ballpark idea uh, how much of an increase over base the spending is in this bill? Representative Hanson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I don't because we've we have um, well, 670 million, uh, but we've the original governor's bill had ongoing funds. We have the tails of 90 million, of which 75 million we're appropriating to the operating increases across the agencies. Um, so the exact percent we also are expending beyond general fund uh, using some of the dedicated dollars. Uh, so I don't have that number in aggregate or individually per fund. Should have that soon. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I don't have any more technical questions, so Bob, you're, you're, Commissioner, you're, uh, you're good. Um, yeah, Representative Hanson, we, I think that it's fair to say there's a lot of, conf, conf, or a lot of language in this bill uh, that's concerning. And uh, I'm going to be a no vote today. That's not necessarily a huge, huge surprise. Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things missing. And I had a number of folks in my office today kind of going through and people that have wanted to meet with you and haven't been able to get a meeting or just missed you one way or the other. And and I think that we'll, we'll continue to, you know, I've hopefully work on some of these, some of these questions that are being raised. You know, a couple of things like, like boat landings. Obviously, uh, something that was in the governor's recommendations, not in the bill. Um, a decrease in the hatcheries dollars that were recommended. A lot of questions. Um, why no invasive cart barrier money? If I've missed that, I apologize, you could speak to it, Representative Hanson, but a lot of controversial language questions that we've raised, and there was some commitment to work on some of that language, but I've checked with members, and I don't know that there was really a, an effort to make adjustments to, to the concerns that the minority raised. Fee increases while we have Seventeen and a half billion dollar surplus, and uh, one of the conversations that that came up and that I didn't have an answer for it was a group of sportsmen and women who were like, "Well, okay, with the huge surplus that we have, you know, why?" And I don't have an answer for that. That's that's something that uh, is going to be felt across the state, and if this bill becomes law, you know, I hope that there's an opportunity to maybe consider with the surplus, is there a dollar amount that could put a fee increase off another biennium or two and keep the agency functioning at a high level? Maybe that's not possible, but I'm guessing that it probably is. And, Representative Hanson? Uh, so, uh, Madam Chair and Representative Heinzman, so to answer a few of those questions, 
This budget relates to not just the DNR and not just the outdoor community, but the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, the Board of Water and Soil Resources, Minnesota Zoo, the Science Museum, the Metropolitan Council, Minnesota Conservation Corps, etc. Um, it is the largest one-time increase in the environment ever. It's the most significant investment. And so we can't do everything. So the prioritization is to do things, and it's one-time money. So to do, continue the operating and make sure that we're paying the folks who do the work, we've got to have the fee increases to make sure that those things work, to pay the people who do the work. So do I want, do I want to raise the fees? No. Uh, was there a way to do that? No, but we also need to invest that one-time opportunity. Just like you said, the general fund dollars, we're putting in that into climate. We're putting it into the things that have been blocked for four years. Comprehensive chronic wasting disease reform. Comprehensive emerald ash borer. Comprehensive uh, uh, aquatic invasive species. All of those things we're investing in. So yes, if it was a choice between dealing with ash trees coming down and replanting trees and boat docks, we chose the ash trees. That's a choice. It's a policy choice. We made that choice. You can vote against it. People may disagree with it, but that's the choice we made. What we did do, and I referenced earlier just in the amendment today, there was $30 million sitting in the critical habitat account. And we're spending that, and every dollar we spend in that on acquisition of wildlife management areas brings in Pittman-Robertson dollars from the federal government. That wasn't in the governor's budget. That wasn't in any of the interest groups or the lobbyist money. That was something we did that we could acquire additional dollars. We also rewrote the provisions in the Board of Water and Soil Resources so that we could bring in CREP dollars when we're doing water storage. So bringing in additional dollars. So yes, sometimes you have to spend money to make money. But this one-time opportunity that we are lucky enough, all of us, to be here, we have to make choices. And those choices are such, we're putting money into the science museum, re reducing their debt and trying to bring back the employees that were there. I don't want to let the science museum fail for our future, for our kids. We've all been through a lot with COVID. We have a one-time opportunity. And that's why we're investing in it. Now, people can pick at things and say this isn't in there or that isn't in there. This is the largest increase. Last year, we were talking about $10 million. This year it's $670 million, the largest ever. What an opportunity. But it isn't going to last forever, so we extend the appropriations so that they will extend, but you have to have the people to do it. And that's why we provide, provide the operating increase, and that's why we have the fees. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. And you addressed a few of the questions and concerns that I raised, Representative Hansen, but there's a few left out. For example, the cart barriers. I was and, just waiting and for you to ask it again. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll answer that. I, I, can, I can continue, okay. Chair. There's a few other things that we can Would address. you prefer to do questions one by one, or would you prefer to throw out more than one and see what you get? I have a few more comments, Chair. So. Okay, uh, Representative Hanson to the fish barrier. Um, the fish barrier, so $17 million on lease property. That's a choice uh, I would rather acquire something. I would rather invest in other things that have a that we own or that we can control and lease property, putting a fish barrier on lease property. I've been here long enough to remember that we had to do the Coon Rapids Dam to save save the our water systems from carp. We did that. We paid for that. I've been here long enough to remember that we had to close the lock. We did that. I'm here long enough to remember for dealing with carp, we had to have the Aquatic Invasive Species Research Center. We did that. And we heard testimony earlier where we would be taking that lab work and that research work from the lab to the lake. We're doing that. That's one of the investments. I've been here long enough to remember that we put a dam on Lake Okaboji in Iowa. We used Minnesota dollars on 
Iowa property to stop the carp. So just like every time the snow melts, yes, the carp are there. I authored the amendment, I believe, in 2007 or 8 to require reporting a carp. We've been dealing with carp for a long time. But I do not believe it is a sound use of money to invest $17 million on leased property. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. And I've been along here, been here a long time too, Representative Hanson. So I've seen aquatic invasive species issues come to the forefront, and we hear our constituents around the state raising concern on this issue. And I, I'd be interested to know if they felt that a seventeen and a half million dollar chance to stop something that could be, be potentially much worse was worth the investment. And they might disagree with you, Representative Hanson. I think they do. Um, that's just one example. And you, Representative Hanson, you brought up MPCA. I understand that's part of this bill. I understand that we're talking about many other subject areas, and we're likely going to have a more robust conversation on the floor. So that's fine. Those are a few things that I wanted to raise today. We could talk about the other subject areas that are addressed in the bill, the agencies, whether it's Bowser, whether it's something that we're doing for the LCCMR, the Lassard SAMs, or whatever the case. But we are, as I am, objecting to, to the bill today and voting no, and I want to give a few reasons. And I appreciate that you've worked to address a few of those concerns that I have raised. There's a lot more. And uh, thankfully, we have a little bit of time left, and we hopefully can get at some of those things uh, between now and the end of session. Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Chair, and Representative Heisman, just to answer one other question. So we voted for a bonding bill that had the Bedora Nursery and the Waterville Fish Hatchery. 91 members voted. So in the capacity for getting people outdoors and dealing with our outdoors, we've already had votes on that. We made our choice on those. So some people may not have been aware of that. So what we're doing is we're building up, and there's going to be another bonding bill. And there's still that bonding bill. If the Senate took action, we would have had the money for Bedora and Waterville already. I'm an optimist that that'll pass at some point. And then what we're doing is we're adding additional dollars. In there. Those are choices. If people don't vote for that, I'm happy to have voted for that, and I'm happy for the work that... Chair Lee has done for, in that bonding bill, one of the largest environmental investments also in history. Put together, and we're not done yet, there's going to be a massive investment in our outdoor infrastructure. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. Speaking of things that we're voting on, I think we should also vote on this, and it should be a roll call, so I'll request one. Thank you. Uh, Representative Heinzman, I will come back to you. We, Representative Hansen has not moved it yet. Once he does, I will come back to you for a roll call request. Thank you. If that makes sense. Uh, further questions from members as to the DE1 amendment? Well, in that case, uh, Representative Hansen, would you move the DE1 amendment as amended? I would move the DE1 amendment as amended. It is the largest one time investment in the environment, in the history of the state of Minnesota. Representative Heinzman? Yes, thank you, Chair. I would like a roll call. Representative Heinzman requests a roll call on the DE1 amendment as amended for... I lost the House file number. I was going to come after it. 23, for House file 2310. Um, and the clerk will take the roll. Representative Hansen. Aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Representative Jordan. Aye. Representative Jordan. Aye. Representative Heinzman. No. Representative Heinzman. No. Representative Brand. Aye. Representative Brand. Aye. Representative Burkle. No. Representative Burkle. No. Representative Edelson. Aye. Representative Edelson. Aye. Representative Finky. Aye. Representative Finky. Aye. Representative Fisher. Aye. Aye. Representative Fisher. Aye. Representative Gilman. Gilman. No. Representative Gilman, no. Representative Jacob, no. Representative Jacob, no. Representative Lee, Lee, aye. Representative Lee, aye. Representative Lislagard, Lislagard, no. Representative Lislagard, no. Representative Purcell, 
Aye. Representative Purcell? Aye. Mm -hmm. Representative Schultz? No. Representative Schultz? No. Representative Scraba? No. Representative Scraba? No. Representative Vang? Aye. Representative Vang? Aye. Madam Chair, the ayes are nine, the nays are seven. Uh, the motion prevails and the DE1 amendment as amendment uh, as amended is adopted. Uh, Representative Hansen, closing comments. I want to take a moment and just thank uh, Mr. Hagemeyer and Ms. Mm -hmm. Taylor uh, for their efforts on this um, and the work they done they have done. Um, it often happens uh, quietly, but it is always efficient and it is always effective. And so um, I just want to thank you uh, on behalf of everybody on the committee for your work and uh, appreciate what you've done. We can't say it enough and uh, want to thank you. Uh, I renew my motion that House File 2310 as amended be recommended to be re-referred to the Ways and Means Committee and direct nonpartisan staff to make any technical corrections to conform with the actions and the intent of the committee. I also want to make sure I thank the partisan staff uh, who are here, who are always providing uh, helpful assistance on both sides of the aisle. So I want to thank them uh, and all members for their input during this process. Um, and with that, Representative Hansen renews his motion that House File 2310, as amended, be recommended to be re-referred to the Ways and Means Committee and directs nonpartisan staff to make any technical corrections to conform with the action intent of this committee. Um, all those in favor, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no. 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 Um, the motion prevails um, and the bill is on its ways, is on its way to ways and means. Um, members, we are going to take a recess. We will be coming back at 6 p.m. Um, to hear the final two bills on our agenda for this evening. Um, Representative Hansen, would you like to give us any sort of roadmap for what to expect for the next so, period of time? Thank you, Madam Chair, members. So we'll come back at 6. We have to break at 7.15. If we are not done with our work by 7.15, we will come back probably at 8.30 um, and go until we've completed our work. Uh, the bill will leave here uh, and go to Ways and Means. Uh, the bill tonight, if they are passed, will go to Ways and Means, but because it is after deadline and because one is the constitutional amendment, it will go, it will go automatically to the Rules Committee. Um, I am not clear when uh, they will be considered in Ways and Means. It probably depends on the other committees doing their work as well. Uh, but uh, break will be coming soon. Uh, we may be having a joint hearing on the Monticello uh, plant incident uh, after the break with the uh, uh, Climate Committee, Representative Ake, Chair Akum. Thank you, Representative Hansen. Uh, members, please also hang on to your bill packets from House File 1900 and House File 2778 for this evening, because um, they're the only ones you're going to be given. Um, and with that, the committee stands in recess until 6 p.m.